just wanted to get to uh, you know one of the the themes of of the morning, uh, you know the. LLMs and, and AI. I'm just wondering if, if maybe you could each just talk a little bit about how you're thinking about um, AI and, and how it fits into what you're doing. Uh, we are seeing our customers use our data for those models. Um, you know, I don't get a ton of insight into the actual details of those models, unfortunately. Um, but it is, uh, and it is going away from just uh, data points, so the things that would fit into a row and a column very nicely towards, for example, review data. So if there's, you know, free text review data going back 12 years on whatever the topic of interest might be, that sort of information, which to the human eye is just, you can't process it, uh, that's like kind of ideal for those types of, uh, of models. So we are seeing that happen. It's very early. Um, the feedback's been, you know, pretty good. They, they want to continue to ingest that kind of data. So that's usually a pretty good sign. And uh, you know, I'm assuming it's going to continue. Yeah, I mean, I think those models are great for voluminous amounts of unstructured data. So if that's the kind of alternative data that you get access to, um, I think it's, you know, it was interesting. I'm going to try to catch the Voya guy who has an AI model in, in production over three years. That's a surprising outlier to me. I tend to see more um, investors and asset managers getting into the space, but being a little bit where I think Pang was of POC and, and piloting um, just to get comfort. Um, but I do think the intersection of, hey, you know, basically you're not going to get that much bang for the buck if you throw a humongous model at traditional financial tabular data that is the corner case of actually already kind of regulated map together governance, you know, map, that's not really going to be where you get your bang for the buck. So I think there's an intersection there. But then yet again, what's fit for purpose, you need, let's say it's LLMs, a lot of text data. Um, and I think where people are finding interesting corners is, you know, they are so cool, especially chat UBT, because it's basically like magic, right? You can ask, talk to it, and it's basically like magic due to some tipping point of how much data you've got. And we all know that, well, then that's not that useful for these specific use cases, but where you kind of fall back off that tipping point of it's not that magical anymore, it's my internal proprietary sandbox of data that's very specific, Where how much better it has to be to justify the cost um, of training these models, you know, so I, I think that's maybe where the rubber is going to meet the road is, you know, what types of unstructured data sets at what volumes and then what is the use case you're going to apply. If I think of a firm like Fidelity, I'm more excited in the near term, maybe we we're talking about sort of next 12 to 18 months versus next three to five years. I'm more excited in the near term about what can you do with like chat and human interaction, cl client and customer interaction, which is a big cost center for us. And I think that investment use case um, is more complex um, and trickier to solve. So it's maybe um, a little further out, at least from what I've seen. Yeah, I mean, getting back to once again, you know, AI, generative AI, it really comes down to, you know, connecting data, making it fit for purpose, right? The preferred architecture for, for LLM models are knowledge graphs, which is actually what we've built at, at Spatial Risk, right? So we've connected all our data under a single set of standards. So every data point in our graph, which is billions, is either connectly, directly connected or indirectly connected to every other data point. So we basically can answer a lot of questions today. If you want to basically give me the top five weather events at any ExxonMobil weather, ExxonMobil physical location in the last five years, we could take our structured data and turn that into unstructured text and answer that question. As far as the ML space, that's a space that we're really comfortable in in the geospatial community. For example, using um, convolutional neural nets to do object extraction, um, other computer vision techniques, uh, and just moving target indicators that kind of like automatic extraction of features from data is a space that we're pretty set in. Obviously, there's, you know, always innovation, but that's really a cornerstone of the industry. As far as LLMs go, I think that there's a lot of opportunity, um, both in connecting data, as Ken mentioned, um, so extracting things that are necessary on an asset level, but as well, um, I think there's opportunity in my industry um, to do better like data data fusion and um, provide context to the data that we are providing. So as mentioned, we're looking at 
putting out more dedicated products to answer questions, not really big data sets, but instead just an update, a monitor of a situation. And in that case, um, using an, L an LLM to, uh, to better index like web scraping data, for instance, we have this wealth of data. We want to only find what is applicable to our case, applicable to this location, applicable to this moment in time, and then create a story around it. We can create like far more efficient products that way that use a lot less um, like human in the loop analyst time.